It is now one year since the beginning of the genocide in Gaza, one of the greatest war crimes of the modern period. According to official figures, the death toll is now over 41,000. The real death toll is far higher, as many as 200,000. Gaza has been reduced to rubble, buildings, hospitals, schools, universities, destroyed. Who is responsible for this atrocity? Of course, the Netanyahu regime, the fascists who comprise it, who seized on the events of October 7 to implement long-standing plans for the annihilation of Palestine, for the Palestinians' ethnic cleansing, as part of a reorganization of the entire Middle East. But behind them stand the imperialist powers, above all the United States, the Biden-Harris administration, which has armed, financed, and politically justified the genocide, both the parties of the American ruling class. One year on, it's also clear that the genocide in Gaza is a component part of a global war. The genocide is itself now expanding into the Israeli war against Lebanon, backed by the United States, and the threats of a dangerous escalation into outright war against Iran. This itself is part of the broader global conflict, including the escalating U.S.-NATO war against Russia and the developing conflict with China. After a year of the genocide, certain political conclusions must be drawn. It is not through appeals to the political establishment, the perpetrators of the crime, that it will be stopped. It is necessary to mobilize that social force which has the power to oppose the capitalist ruling elite, to oppose imperialism. And that is the working class in the United States and throughout the world. The Socialist Equality Party and our election campaign are fighting to mobilize the working class, to connect the fight for the rights of the working class to the fight against war and the fight against capitalism. Join us in our election campaign at socialism2024.org.